Ever since he entered Major League Baseball in 2018, Shohei Otani has established himself as one of the most talented players and biggest spectacles that baseball has ever seen, becoming the first successful two-way player in nearly a century. But while most people know him today for his combination of achievements on the mound and in the batter's box, what most people don't know is that if it weren't for one team's unprecedented decision six years earlier, he may have come to the United States at just 18 years old, and he never would have gotten a chance to become the two-way superstar he is today. This is the story of how Shohei Otani became Shohei Otani. This is Sports Audit. The year is 2012, and Shohei Otani is on the mound representing his high school at Japan's annual Summer Koshin Tournament. But even though he's just 18 years old at this time, there is still an immense amount of pressure resting on young Otani's shoulders. Not only because he's pitching in the biggest tournament of his life, and not just because he's one of the best prospects Japan has seen in years but also because he is on the verge of making a life-altering and career-defining decision. You see, for most Japanese prospects like Otani, their next move is Nippon Pro Baseball, or NPB, which is the highest level of Japanese professional baseball. These players typically enter the league through the annual NPB draft, where they're assigned to one of the 12 organizations in the league and start working their way up toward playing on the top tier team, or Ichigun, where if they play well enough for long enough, they might be able to become one of the lucky few Japanese players to earn the right to be posted for major league ball clubs. However, this is a process that took years. It's far from guaranteed, and even those who do get posted aren't able to do so until they're in their mid to late 20s. Not exactly ideal for starting a major league career. So for a player like Shohei, whose main goal was to get to the majors as soon as possible, this didn't really appeal to him. But luckily for him, he was far from a typical prospect. At just 18 years old, he was already throwing a 100 mile an hour fastball to go along with a decent slider and splitter that would go on to define his pitching later on in his career. This alone put him on the radar of a bunch of major league teams like the Dodgers and Red Sox, who were all wanting to sign him right out of high school. This of course would allow Shohei to immediately begin his big league journey, and maybe even get a fast track to the majors if he was good enough. It seemed like everything Otani was looking for. However, this move also came with a ton of risk for Shohei. You see, one characteristic of Japanese baseball culture is that they don't exactly take too kindly to Japanese players who opt to skip playing in their home country entirely. So much so that in 2008, NPB imposed a new rule known as the Tazawa Rule, which was named after a Japanese player who signed with the Red Sox out of high school. Essentially, the rule stated that if a Japanese player opted out of the NPB draft and instead started their professional career in another country, that player couldn't come back to Japan and play in a Japanese league for at least three seasons. So essentially, what this meant was that if Shohei decided to go down this path and he wasn't able to make it in America, his baseball playing career would essentially be dead on arrival since he couldn't go back to Japan as a fallback. But even though he knew just how risky the decision he was making was, it seemed that young Otani already had his mind made up. And so, in October of 2012, Otani held a press conference, where he officially announced that he was intending to sign in America, and told the owners of all 12 teams not to select him in the upcoming NPB draft. But while most of the teams in the league took this news in stride and took the opportunity to focus on other prospects before the draft, there was still one team that held out hope for Otani. You see, they still had one more trick up their sleeve, and unlike the other teams, 
they had a front office and a coaching staff that was just crazy enough to use it. Heading into the 2012 offseason, the Nippon Ham Fighters were fresh off an appearance in Japan's championship series. However, they were still facing a crucial transitionary period ahead of them. At the time, the team was coming off of the greatest run of success that they had ever had in franchise history. After selecting a young pitcher by the name of Yu Darvish in the 2004 NPB draft, Darvish would help lead the team to their first title in 44 years in 2006, and they would make additional appearances in the Japan series in 2007, 2009, and 2012. However, heading into the 2012 season, the team was facing a massive shift. Not only did they lose Darvish to the Texas Rangers, but they also cut ties with their current manager at the time, leaving two huge holes that needed to be filled. One for the manager that would lead the team into the future, and another for a new superstar to fill the shoes of Yu Darvish. The latter here being incredibly important, not only to stay competitive in the short term with the rest of the league, but also because if they're able to successfully post that player later on, it could bring in tens of millions of dollars worth of posting fees to the ball club. And so, even though they failed to sign their top draft pick in the 2011 draft, and they knew that Otani didn't want to be drafted by an NPB team, the fighters still felt it was worth the risk to draft Otani anyway, mainly because they knew that he could be the superstar that they were looking for if he decided to stay. And now, they had a one-month exclusive negotiating period in which to change his mind. As you might imagine, the fighters came out swinging during their initial negotiations, not only highlighting the massive cultural differences and terrible minor league conditions he'd have to face in America, but also offering him a huge signing bonus of $1 million and an agreement to post him whenever Otani felt he was ready. Of course, this all intrigued Otani, but ultimately, it wasn't doing much to move the needle in terms of changing his mind. That was, until the team started discussing how he would be used on the field. In their scouting of Otani, they knew that his hitting ability could play at the professional level, and they knew that he wanted to play the field. But they also knew that if he went to the United States, they would only use him as a pitcher, and he would never get a chance to develop his hitting ability at the big league level. Knowing this, Nippon Ham came to Otani with a bold and intriguing offer. If Otani decided to stay with the fighters and play in NPB, they promised to give him the opportunity to become Japan's only Nitoryu, or two-way player. And this is where the new manager of the fighters, Hideki Kuriyama, came into play. Much like their drafting of Otani, their hiring of Kuriyama was a bit of a weird choice for the fighters especially since he had never had any managerial experience beforehand, and in fact was known mostly as a broadcaster. But as a former player, he brought to the table a ton of experience and knowledge of the game, and most importantly, a willingness to experiment, as he would become an early adopter of strategies such as the shift and the opener. So when it came to Otani and his two-way status, Kuriyama was more than willing to give him a chance to do it, and in fact, he played a key role in assuring Otani that he had the full support of the fighters organization, and it was those assurances that finally helped them to turn the tide and change Otani's mind around. And so, just two months after officially announcing his intent to sign with a major league team, Shohei Otani shocked the Japanese baseball world once again, this time by announcing that he was signing with the fighters as a two-way player. And the rest, as they say, was history. After putting up somewhat decent numbers on both sides of the ball during his first professional season, Otani quickly developed into the kind of superstar the fighters hoped he could be, earning five all-star appearances, multiple end-of-the-year awards, and developing a reputation as one of the best pitchers and hitters that Japan had to offer. And all of this culminated in an unprecedented 2016 campaign, where he posted an ERA under 2 on the mound, an OPS over 1,000 at the plate, won the league's MVP award, and eventually led his team to their third championship in franchise history. 
a performance that ultimately paved the way for him to be posted in 2017 and join the Los Angeles Angels as MLB's only full-time two-way player. In other words, we'll never know what would have happened if Otani signed with the Dodgers out of high school. But if there's one thing we can say with 100% certainty, it's that it would have been a lot more boring and a lot less groundbreaking than what we're seeing him do today. And for that, we have to thank the one team that was willing to do anything to make sure that Otani stayed on their side. And all of the people within that organization who allowed it to happen.